All right, mates. Howdy doody. We had another little break because I had creative block and also a little stomach bug as well, which was lovely. In today's video, we're doing vanilla red cloud mesa and Mogor for the Tauren. So let's go. Once a nomadic people, the Tauren roamed the endless plains of the Barrens, hunting the mighty Kodo. Scattered across the land, the wandering tribes were united only by their common hatred for their sworn enemy, the marauding centaur. Seeking aid against the centaur, the great chieftain Cairn Bloodhoof befriended the savage orcs who had recently journeyed to Kalimdor. With the orcs' help, Cairn and his tribe were able to drive back the centaur and claim the grasslands of Mulgore for their own. Upon the windswept mesa of Thunder Bluff, Cairn built a refuge for his people. Over time, the scattered tribes united under a single banner. Though the noble Tauren are peaceful in nature, the rites of the Great Hunt are venerated as the heart of their spiritual culture. As a tribesman of Mulgore, you must test your skills in the wild and prove yourself in the Great Hunt. Did a little bit of research. Tauren are indeed based on the part man, part bull things from Greek mythology. In fact, during development of Warcraft 3, they were originally intended to be called Minotaurs. Side note, we pronounce it Minotaur in Britain. I know Americans say it as Minotaur, which sounds kind of dumb to me, but whatevs. Potato, potato. Anyway, this is a really long-winded way of telling you I decided to give our hero a cool Greek hero name. Testicles. Testicles started his adventure in Camp Narash within the region of Red Cloud Mesa. Located atop high cliffs in southern Mulgor, this area is where young Tauren proved themselves to be useful members of society by hunting and more hunting. Red Cloud Mesa used to be a peaceful, serene place, but recently has come under siege by invading Brittleback Quillbors, who are getting a bit too big for their boots and trying to expand out into Tauren territory. And that's about it. Not exactly as lore heavy as the Night Elf starting zone, but oh well. Some guy called Grull Hawkwind approached our hero to give him his first quest. Moo, bruh. You have a promising air about you. Perhaps someday you'll be welcomed into the great city of Thunder Bluff, but not before you prove yourself to my father, Chief Hawkwind. Anyway, our village needs resupplying. Go and hunt some plane striders and bring us their meat and feathers. Cheers, mate. So like most starting zones, our hero's first quest was to kill some wildlife. He murdered a whole bunch of ostrich-looking dickheads and returned to Grull. I knew you could do it, Testicles. Now we need materials for clothing and to mend our tents. So go kill some mountain cougars. Grull's dad, Chief Hawkwind, appeared and was like, My mum set out this morning to fetch some water. She's not come back. She's pretty old, so could you go and check and see if she's alright? She's probably just got lost, because she's a bit senile. Finding an old lady seemed a lot easier than fighting against cougars, so Testicles decided to do that first. He head to the well and found Great Mother Hawkwind, and she was like, I smell cinnamon rolls. Testicles took one look at her and felt kind of sad. She'd lived a long life, provided for the tribe and her family for generations. And now, she'd lost her marbles and was probably riddled with arthritis. So he decided to take the water pitcher, fill it up from the well himself, and return it to Chief Hawkwind. She'll probably be fine out in the wilderness by herself. Don't worry about it. Chief Hawkwind seemed pretty grateful. Your willingness to help with such humble tasks is a noble trait, Testicles. You'll be granted access to Thunderbluff in no time. But you'll need to embark on the rights of the Earth Mother before that. Go south and find Seer Grey Tongue. He'll talk you through the Rite of Strength. So our hero heads south of Camp Narash and found the Seer's house. The rights of the Earth Mother are pretty tough, mate. First, the Rite of Strength. You've got to prove your bravery by slaying enemies of the tribe. Bristlebacks in the ravine to the east are starting to take the piss a bit, ambushing our hunting parties and stealing from our village and stuff. Bunch of jerks. Go kill them and steal their belts. Not only will they be dead, but their spirit's trousers will keep falling down and that'll be hilarious. Return to the chief when you're done. There were some mountain cougars in the area around the seer's house, so Testicles killed a bunch of them until he had enough pelts. Camp Narash was on the way to Brambleblade Ravine, so he figured he might as well go hand those pelts in first. And it's lucky he did, because he picked up a bunch of other quests for the ravine too. Headed to the ravine, are you? Well, you might as well kill some of the Quillbores Battleboars whilst there. Bring back some snouts and flank steaks. We can make a stew! And a lady called Brave Windfeather was like, as important as making a stew is, you could also kill their leader, Chief Sharp Tusk Thornmantle, if you want. So our hero head out again. On the way to the cave entrance of the Brambleblade Ravine, Testicles killed some battle boars. When he reached the entrance to the ravine, he paused, took a deep breath, and then let out a glorious battle moo and ran in. 
He killed everything that got in his way. Quill bores, more battle bores, Chief Sharp Tusk Thorn Mantle. Everything was brilliant. He also discovered a dirt-stained map within the Quillbore camp. It was plans for an attack on Camp Narash. Those bloody swines? He rushed back to camp and handed in all the quests, and let Chief Hawkwind know that the Quillbores were planning on attacking them, and the Chief was a bit startled. This information will prove useful, Testicles. We'll need to call upon our brethren from Bloodhoof Village to help thwart the attack. You may well have saved lives here today, you beautiful bastard. Also, talking of Bloodhoof Village, that's where you're headed next. Seek out Chief Bane Bloodhoof to continue with the rites of the Earth Mother. See ya. It was already time for Testicles to head out of the Tauran starting area into the wider Mulgore region. That was fast. On the way to Bloodhoof Village, our hero bumped into some cow called Antur Fallow. And guess what? She had a delivery for an innkeeper. Of course she did. When he arrived at Bloodhoof Village, he delivered the bundle of furs to the innkeeper. And just like the Night Elf video, realised there were a whole bunch of quests available in the area and that this was going to take a while. First, a guy called Rule Eagle Talon approached Testicles. I'm a warrior, but also a teacher. Yeah, you're also a douchebag, mate. Hey, don't sass me. If you want to test your strength, there's some harpies to the southeast. Go kill them and bring me eight of their talons. Next, Testicles spoke to the man of the hour himself, Bane Bloodhoof. He had a few tasks for our hero. I've seen some shit, man. This land is burdened with many conflicts, so we need to be extra vigilant. For example, there's a bunch of gnolls hanging about in the area. We tried to communicate with them, but well, they're not the smartest creatures, really. I know you're probably thinking, but they're just gnolls. How much trouble can they be? But Sodom, go kill 23 of them. After that, head up north. There's a bunch of dwarves digging for secrets. Now a little history lesson. The last time our people went about digging for secrets, we awakened an earth elemental called Theradras. Long story short, she destroyed our homeland, Mishanchi. It's called Desolus now, on account of it being bleakly empty and crap. And on top of that, she ended up being the mother of centaurs, which are like our mortal enemy. So what I'm saying is, digging for secrets is bad. So go steal their picks, and then break them at a forge or something. And finally, since you want to do the Rites of the Earth Mother questline as well, go talk to Zalman Two Moons. He'll tell you about the Rite of Vision. Testicles was glad there was a quest log to keep track of all this, because he hadn't really been paying that much attention. Another guy called Mull Thunderhorn appeared and was like, Since this is Vanilla WoW, goblins haven't joined the Horde yet. They're still a neutral race. And by neutral, I mean they're neutrally jerks to everybody. They've poisoned our water wells. Which is great. Makes you wonder why we'd ever be friends with them. In order to cleanse each well, we need to create a totem and then do a ritual. So go get some paws and talons from the wildlife round here and we'll make the totem. There were a couple of other random mundane tasks around the village. Fetch quests and shiz. But they were kind of one-offs, and it doesn't really advance the overall story except to further reinforce the point that touring culture is similar to that of, like, Native American, living off the land and hunting and stuff. Testicles made his way to Zalman Two Moons to continue the rites of the Earth Mother. The rite of vision requires the water of the seers, but we need to make some first. You'll need some well stones, which can be found in wells, obviously, and some amber corn, which fall off trees in the area. You're gonna like this water, mate. You'll be tripping your tits off. Finally, a bloke called Moor Raincaller appeared and was like, My grandfather used to tell me stories about his battle with a strider called Mazranash. I loved the stories, but I always kind of thought he was just making it up. Until, about half an hour ago, when Mazranash attacked me and bit my shoulder. I need a remedy to cure the wound. I've got most of the stuff already, but I just need a flatland cougar femur. So go get me one of them. Post haste. It was now time for Testicles to run around like he had mad cow disease and do a million quests. He grabbed the ambercorns and wellstones. He killed and looted wolves, plain striders and cougars. He headed to the knoll camps and murdered a whole bunch of those idiots. Fought some harpies in the east and grabbed their talons. At some point, he bumped into an outrunner called Morin Cloudstalker. A few days ago, Morin and his herd of mates had stumbled upon a Venture Company caravan near Stonebull Lake. They attacked the caravan because the Venture Company are jerks, and then set fire to their supplies. We thought that would be the end of it, but there's reports of a bunch more Venture Co. salvages hanging around the burned wagons so I guess we might not have destroyed their supplies after all. Can you go there and check out what's inside those crates? Testicles head out towards the lake and found the caravan site. When he examined the crates, he discovered an enclosed document. This detailed a shipment addressed to a supervisor called Fizz Sprocket, containing resources for the Venture Jerks to continue mining within the Mulgore region. The shipment also contained some shredders to start gathering lumber as well. Those no good Venture Co. twats coming over here, stealing our minerals and lumber. It's not even theirs to take. Our hero then headed back to Bloodhoof Village to hand in the massive amount of quests he'd completed. Mole Thunderhorn was pleased he could now create his cleansing totem. The next step was to actually cleanse some wells. 
First, we'll do the Winter Hoof Water Well. Perform the ritual, Testicles. But watch out. It'll be guarded by four goblins. They may be small, but there's four of them, and that's tougher than it sounds. Also, Zalman Two Moons was like, thanks for the stuff. I now present to you some Water of the Seers. In order to do the Rite of Vision, sit by the tribal fire, drink the water, wait a little bit, and you'll have the most psychedelic experience you've ever had in your life, man. Side effects may include that you'll spend the rest of your life a catatonic vegetable that thinks he's an orange, but still, YOLO. So our hero took drugs and then had possibly the worst experience of his life. A ghost wolf appeared and then it just stood there, didn't move at all. Testicles asked around and found out the wolf was supposed to move really slowly and lead our hero to a seer called Wise Runner. But the whole thing was bugged, so he'd need to just find Seer Wise Runner himself. His first foray into drugs would have ended up being a massive disappointment if it wasn't for Hover Cow showing up for comedic effect. Ground control to Hover Cow. Get down from there, you're just a cow. When he regained his senses, he returned to Moorin Cloudstalker. They're mining and lumberjacking, bunch of greedy knob goblins. Well, sucks to be them, because us Torin aren't going to let them continue their operations in our lands. Go to the Venchico mine and kill seven of them. And kill that supervisor Fizzsprocket guy as well. He sounds like a right jerk. Next, Testicles head to the Winterhoof water well to do some cleansing. He killed the four goblins guarding the well, and then used the cleansing totem. And all was right in the world. Mole Thunderhorn now wanted some Stalker and Cougar Claws to make the next cleansing totem, so our hero murdered some more wildlife. He also remembered Bane had asked him ages ago to steal some dwarf picks, so he decided to go do that. He was there for a while, and the dwarves had a nasty habit of healing themselves mid-fight, which was annoying, but luckily Torin have a racial ability called War Stomp that interrupts spells, so eventually he collected a bunch of Prospector's picks. There was a forge in the area, but it was too tough to get to alone, and Testicles doesn't have any friends, so he figured he'd hold on to the picks for now and break them the next time he came across a forge. A little bit north of the dwarf camp, Testicles found Seer Wise Runner. You've done the right of strength and the right of vision already, eh? How was the water of the seers? Was it massively disappointing? Any move? Want to do the right of wisdom? Go east to Red Rocks. Seek out the ancestral spirit. Bye. On the way to Red Rocks, Testicles stumbled across a guy called Lawkeeper Rain Totem. Headed to Red Rocks, are you? Did you know it's a sacred burial ground reserved only for the noblest of warriors who helped found and defend Thunder Bluff? But also anyone who's given their life for the greater good of their tribe and chieftain. It's not that exclusive, to be honest. Everyone gets buried there. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of bristleback interlopers messing about, shitting on graves and stuff. It's an outrage. Kill them. So Testicles continued towards the ancestral spirit whilst killing bristlebacks that were shitting on graves and stuff. When he found the ancestral spirit, it was like, hey, how's it going? We, the ancestral spirits, represent the mighty Torin, who gave their lives to protect the great city of Thunder Bluff. Now that duty is yours. With my blessing, you will now be revered within our great city. The only thing left to do for that questline is to journey to Thunder Bluff and seek out our noble leader, Cairn Bloodhoof. May the eternal sun shine upon thee, brah. Testicles returned to Lawkeeper Rain Totem and advised him that the bristlebacks that had been shitting on graves and stuff were taken care of. He also finished off collecting the claws for Mole's Totem. By this point, Testicles had reached about level 10 and he was starting to feel like a full-on superhero. Mole Thunderhorn next wanted our hero to head to the Thunderhorn water well and give that one a good thorough cleansing. So Testicles head off and did that. He then decided, since everybody kept going on about how great Thunder Bluff was, he'd go and check it out. It took a while for him to figure out how to actually get up to the city, but he eventually found a lift. Upon entering the place, he thought, yeah, it's all right. Wouldn't exactly refer to it as a city myself, but whatevs. A guy called Eon Eagle Talon popped out of nowhere and was like, you're going to be meeting the chief, eh? That's cool. My brother is due to stand before him soon too. I have the honor of making his headdress for him because that's all I'm good for. Problem is, I've wasted so much time complaining about having to make this hat, it's not been made. So I'll tan some leather, you go get the feathers. Cheers, buddy. Our hero also found a forge within Thunder Bluff, so he used it to break the prospector's picks he collected from the cold dead hands of dwarves. Hopefully, Bane Bloodhoof is a patient bloke who won't mind the fact that our hero has kept him waiting for bloody weeks. He then approached High Chief Cairn Bloodhoof and was like, Hey Chief, sorry I'm not wearing a headdress. Literally only just found out that we're supposed to get dressed up when we meet you. How now, brown cow? I hear you've completed the rites of the Earth Mother. That's cool. You've well and truly earned a place in this great city. However, you'll need to continue to prove your worth if you want to keep that place. In case you haven't figured it out by now, Testicles, we're hunters. We hunt. That's about it. Sometimes we eat grass and milk each other, but mainly, we hunt. Head back down to Mulgore. Find the mighty Kodo called Arakea. If you can track it, kill it. 
and bring me a torn. That'd be pretty swell. It was fun whilst it lasted, but it was now time to go back down the lift and return to the plains of Mulgore. Testicles located the Venture Co. Goblins and their leader supervisor Fitzbrocket at their mine, so he slaughtered them, and then he decided to head back to Bloodhoof Village. He kept Bane Bloodhoof waiting long enough. Jesus Christ, I thought you'd died. Thanks for the broken picks, Testicles. To be honest, I can't even remember why I sent you to get them anymore. I've had a bit too much water of the seers today, and I'm off my face. Mole Thunderhorn was glad that two wells had now been cleansed. There's only one well left, buddy. We need some prairie wolf teeth for the totem. Then I'll make the totem, and then you know what to do. Testicles went and got some prairie wolf teeth, and he also used his mighty hunting skills that he learned in the mountains to find Arakea, the big Kodo loser. Then he head north and killed some harpies, and stole their feathers for that guy who wanted to make a hat. And since he was nearer Thunder Bluff than the village, he decided to hand those few quests in first. Bloody hell, you actually went and killed that Kodo. Usually people can't find it, so they just skip that quest. But good kill anyway. I'll send a party out to gather the meat and stuff from the carcass. Cheers, mate. And Aeon Eagle Talon was kind of grateful for the feathers. Guess my amazing brother gets his stupid hat for the big ceremony. Guaranteed. Everyone comments on how nice the hat is, but nobody gives a flying buttress who made it. And finally, Mole Thunderhorn used the teeth to make the last cleansing totem, which Testicles promptly used to cleanse the wild main water well. And that was it. Bogor was done. Its wells had been cleansed, its wildlife had been mostly destroyed, and any threat in the area had been removed. All thanks to a young cow called Testicles. A couple of folks in Thunder Bluff informed our hero that the next logical step in his adventure would be to head to the Barrens. As the name suggests, it's a bit of a wasteland. A far cry from the lush green landscape that Testicles was accustomed to. In that region, our hero will face much tougher foes, like Centaur, and some more Quillbore. Plus the Alliance are messing about there as well. And we're leaving it there! We've done it! All of the vanilla starting zones are complete. So I guess the obvious choice next would be to do the Draenei and Blood Elf starting zones, because they were added to the game in Burning Crusade. I'm not sure if Cataclysm made much of a difference to those, guess I'll find out. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks, and all there's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!